Hey guys, Steve here at SKS Props. Today we're going to be making a Borderlands 3 Psycho Mask. Hey guys, welcome to the shop. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be coming back with lots more tips and tricks for prop and costume fabrication. In today's build, I'm going to be tackling the Psycho Mask from Borderlands 3. Now you guys know me, I've made a lot of Psycho Masks throughout the years, and this one was a definite challenge. All hand sculpted, no 3D printed parts in there. I'm going to show you guys the steps that it takes to put it together. we got a lot to do, so let's get started. The first thing to do is to break out my CFX head bust and my trusty Lazy Susan. This is so I can easily rotate the sculpture and look at it from different angles. Monster clay is by far my favorite sculpting material. If you guys have not used it, it is hard at room temperature, so I use a convection oven to melt it down and make it more pliable. This is kind of a Goldilocks theory here. You don't want the clay too hard or too soft. You want it just right, so it's easy to work with your hands in the beginning stages. Now, I've gone over sculpting before in other build threads, so we're not going to really delve into that here. Sculpting with monster clay is really just building up your bulk surfaces with your hands at the first, and then going in with tools later to refine all the shapes. People that have seen my work before know that I have a particular look for the eyes on all my Borderlands Psycho masks, so I've tried to replicate that here in the new version as well, just so it has my particular flair. Once the overall face structure has been bulked up and cooled down some, that's when you can start going in with loop tools and various sculpting materials and really start to refine the shape of the overall mask. This particular Psycho Mask has some details on either side of the jaw that are symmetrical. And rather than sculpting these independently, I thought it'd be best to sculpt them, mold them, and resin cast them. That way they would be identical for both sides. There are a bunch of little rivets on the respirator around the mouthpiece, and to simulate those, I decided to take some googly eyes, cut the tops off, pop out the little black part on the inside, and stick those into the monster clay. None of the pieces on this mask were 3D printed, everything was hand sculpted, so here I'm using just various tools in my arsenal to replicate as best I can the look from the game cover. Now because this mask is going to be molded and resin cast, I use some plasticine to build up a mole wall which will create a channel all the way around the mask which will make it easier when I go to slush cast it. Always remember to protect your work surfaces. This is not something that you want to do on your kitchen table, so here I'm putting down some plastic sheeting so I don't get silicone all over the place. My favorite go-to silicone is from Smooth On. It is Rebound 25. It is a one-to-one -one mix ratio. It's extremely durable and very easy to work with. For those of you that have not used silicone before, this is an equal part mix of A and B. I put those into a separate container and then mix that up with a paint stir stick. This first layer of silicone that I'm putting down is extremely important. It is known as the print layer and you want to make sure that there are no air bubbles trapped anywhere on the surface because those will show in the final cast. Here I'm using a chip brush to make sure that I have a single layer of silicone all over the entire surface. It's also very important that I get silicone down into that channel, which will form a lip and help me keep the resin within the mold when I'm slush casting. After the initial print layer, you want to thicken up layer two, three, and four. You can do this by using a chemical called Thyvex that you add into the silicone. Now these layers aren't as important as far as the print layer is. You just want to build up more of the silicone so that it's a little more durable. The blocks of silicone that I've placed onto this are from a previous mold that I no longer use. These will act as mold keys when I make the mother mold or the outer shell that will hold this jacket. For this particular mother mold, I'm going to be using Plasti Paste 2. It is a 2 to 1 mix ratio and it cures to a very hard material. After parts A and B have been mixed together, it's as simple as dumping it out onto the jacket mold and forming it using a paint stir stick. You do have a limited time to work with this. You can tell the material will start getting hot and it will be harder to move around. I dip my hand into a little bit of water which will help me smooth out the surface. Just like previous videos, I will be once again using Smoothcast 65D to slush cast this particular Psycho Mask. This is a one to one mix ratio as well and just as the name would suggest, slush casting. Once you have it all mixed up, pour it into there and slush it around the surface. You can see where that lip that was put into the silicone helps retain all of the resin within the mold. This process is repeated four times. I've found that four thin layers of resin are perfect for its overall weight and durability. 
After the mask is fully cured, it can be popped out of the jacket mold and then cleaned up with a rotary tool. So in this case, I've used my Dremel and Fordham rotary tools to carve out the eyes and trim all the flashing off the exterior of the mask. The base of this mask is a tan flat primer and I'm painting on Liquitex heavy body unbleached titanium with a half inch filbert brush. The big thing to note here is that I'm not covering the surface with the unbleached titanium. I'm allowing the sculptural details to still show through by lightly brushing across the top surface. The second layer here is a highlight layer. It is applied using less water and more pigment. This is specifically placed on the brows, cheeks, and ridges on the forehead. I wanted some very subtle shadows on this mask, so I broke out my Iwata airbrush and used some Vallejo black primer. This was applied around the eyes, respirator, and undercuts on the face. Liquitex Heavy Body Parchment was applied using a dry brush technique and I made sure not to cover up all the shadows that we had just applied with the airbrush. I made a basic template out of some Bristol board that way I would not have to guess while I was freehand painting the symbol onto the mask. Using some Mars Black, I carefully filled in the symbol. Now, I wasn't too concerned about making this perfect because we still had some borderland cell shading to do so we could clean it up later. The same Mars Black was applied to all the pieces that would be metallic and the undercuts. Liquitex Heavy Body Cadmium Orange was then painted onto the symbol. Now here I had to be a little more careful because I did not want to overbleed into the part that was already painted Mars Black. Just like with the white section of the mask, the orange was then applied in a second layer highlighting the brows, cheeks, and top of the forehead. Liquitex Heavy Body Iridescent Rich Silver was then applied to all the metallic parts of the mask. Now remember with silvers and any of the metallics you do not want to add water to them because it will dilute the pigment too much. Here's where I really get to give the mask that Borderlands feel. Using an extremely small liner brush I'm able to go in and do a lot of the different cell shading techniques that you'll see throughout the Borderlands world. This is another one of those techniques that you could definitely overdo, so make sure just to do enough to make the mask pop. Some black scrim is hot glued behind the eyes. This will make it so the wearer can see out, but nobody can see in. Now like all of the other Borderlands masks that I make, this one will also have front facing LEDs to match the game box cover. 3 volt 5 millimeter LEDs are glued into place along with a coin battery and an on and off switch. These are all then soldered together to complete the connection. Everything's better with lights. Inch and a half and one inch nylon elastic straps are glued into place. These are adjustable so the wearer can fit it to their face. One inch upholstery foam is also glued in. This is to make sure that even out in the wasteland your mask is nice and comfortable. All right, so you guys can see the steps that it takes to put together a Borderlands 3 Psycho Mask, and I am joined by my buddy, Ethan. You may know him as Thousand Faces Cosplay. He and Lauren do some of the best Borderlands cosplay that I've ever seen. I need another head for my merry-go-round. <laughs> so thank you guys for tuning into this. If you have Borderlands fans that are out there, be sure to share this video online with them because I would love for other people to see what I have created. If you're new to the channel, once again, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to swing back by again for more tips and tutorials. Until then, thanks for stopping by.